Well, hello there. This is Dr. Dell, and this is going to be a lesson on geometry. And in fact, it is lesson number 11. I'm going to correct that in your notes. That should be an 11 up here. And today we're going to talk about one of the more interesting things and valuable things about circles that to, to know, and that is the concept of its area. Now, I'll remind you that a circle is a set of points that are equally distant from a point called the center. The distance uh, of that uh, po center point to the circle is called the radius. And we defined last time that if you took the circumference of the circle and divided it by the diameter of the circle, that was a fixed number pi. And it didn't depend on the size of the circle. No matter what the circle was, that ratio would be the same. Now, that led to the formula for the circumference, which is c equals 2 pi r, basically from the definition. Now, our ancestors then wanted to know what would be the area of the circle. Now, of course, we've talked about area of polygons. And so basically, they were asking, if you took a circle, and if you inscribed in it a whole bunch of little bitty squares and added them all up, what would be the square, what would be the area? As a matter of fact, uh, to define area rigorously is kind of hard to do, but just imagine that uh, you're wanting to know basically how big this circle is compared to um, some other figure. And so that's what area means, and it was, it's a hard problem. Well, it turns out the Greeks uh, for a long time didn't know the answer. But there was a, a wonderful genius mathematician uh, among the Greeks by the name of Archimedes. You've probably heard of Archimedes. He's responsible for many of the wonderful things the Greeks discovered in math. And he discovered a formula for the area. And it turns out that the formula, as we express it today, is to take this ratio pi and take the radius of the circle and square it, and that will be the area. Now, I must tell you, this isn't a definition. Uh, this is a truly remarkable uh, theorem, if you want to call it that, or fact that Archimedes discovered. Uh, the definition of pi is c over d. The fact that the area equals that constant times the radius square is uh, some people uh, marvel at that, and, and, and including me. It's, a, it's almost like it's a miracle. Why would this ratio have anything to do with the area? But it does. And Archimedes discovered it. And of course, that means that we today, because especially because of the calculator, can always calculate the area very, very easily. And we're going to look at some problems in a moment and see how to do that. Um, so here's a circle, and it has a center, it has a radius, it has a diameter, it has a circumference, and we had the formulas last time. Uh, up through here, this was all by definition, uh, c equal 2 pi r because of the definition of pi. And now we have this remarkable formula, a equals pi r squared. Uh, I remember when I first uh, saw that, a teacher told me about it. I said, "How do you? where does that come from? And uh, the facts are that that particular teacher didn't have any idea. And in fact, it just isn't obvious where it comes from at all. But I'm going to show you a little argument that I learned many years later that Archimedes did to kind of demonstrate this. This is almost like the first one of the first wonderful proofs. And uh, you don't have to have this for practical math. So if you want to stop uh, and, and jump ahead in this video to the problems, you can do it. You don't have to know it. But it's a wonderful little thing, and it's actually an easy way to remember this formula if you forget it. Uh, let's take a circle here, and let's slice it into a whole bunch of different pieces of, like a pie. Now let's take these pieces, and let's spread them out over here and rearrange them. And let's take all the pieces on the right side of the circle, and let's have them point this direction, this way. And let's take all the pieces on the left side and point them that way, okay? And let's inter interleave them. Now, these form, if you've made these pieces small enough, this will form what almost looks like a rectangle. And what's the dimensions of it? Well, what's the width? The width is the radius, or it's the diameter divided by 2. What's the length of this? Well, if you take all the pieces on the right side and put them all together like I've just done, you, you stretch them all out, so to speak, it's half the circumference. So this length of this is C over 2, half the circumference. So you've got a rectangle now whose width is d over 2, and its length is c over 2. So what would be the area of such a rectangle? Well, it would be the width times the length, d over 2 times c over 2. And that's what Archimedes discovered. And that was his argument to 
derive the formula for the area. Now, with a little algebra like you all have already learned, you can now take c over 2, and what is c? Well, by definition, that was 2 pi r. So c over 2 is 2 pi over 2. What is d? By definition, d is 2r. So d over 2 is 2r over 2. Now, if you get rid of the 2s, they all cancel. You're left with pi r r, pi r squared. And that is then the first uh, demonstration or proof, if you want to call it, of this fabulous formula. It was done by Archimedes, and uh, he was the first Greek, so far as we know, to prove this thing. Uh, none of his predecessors uh, were able to figure it out. Um, it's like a lot of things in mathematics. Once you see it, it becomes easy, almost obvious. You say, well, gee, that's, that's not so hard to do. But would you have figured it out yourself? If I put you on a desert island somewhere and said, prove this formula, uh, would you have figured out something like this? And uh, who knows the answer to that? Maybe you would have. Maybe you're a mathematical genius like Archimedes was. Uh, I doubt seriously if I would have. Now yeah. I'm going to give you some problems. Back down to the real world now, the practical world, and this is real easy. Uh, we want to find some areas. I remind you that the calculator has a pi key. And the formulas that we've learned, uh, the ones we're interested in today, is the area formula, pi r squared. So I'm going to give you some circles, actually the same ones I gave you last time, only this time I want to know the radius and the area. And then that's what I'm going to give in the answer. Well, in the very case of the very first problem, uh, what have we got? Uh, we're given a circle, we're given the radius. It's 5.4, we know what it is. So what's the area? Well, here's what you do. You take 5.4. And you square it. That's r squared. Times, hit the pi key, hit the equal key, and there's the answer. And I'm going to take it down to one decimal place. 91.6 is the answer. And, of course, that would be square units. If this was inches, that would be square inches. If this was miles, that would be square miles. Whatever the, air, whatever the radius is measured in, whatever linear unit, that will be that unit squared. And it's just that easy. Now, take a slightly harder problem. In this case, what are you given? You're given the diameter, 7.8. Well, to use this formula, we need the air, we need the radius. So how do you get the radius? You take 17.8 and you divide by 2. Now you've got the radius, 8.9. I'll put that as the answer for the radius. Now what do you do? You square it times pi equals, and the answer is 248.8. And I would probably round that off to three digits, which would make it 249. Now you say, well, this is a little harder problem. Now I'm given the circumference. It's okay. You need the radius. How do you get that? You start with the circumference, which is 32. Divide by pi equals, divide by 2 equals, and now you've got the, you've got the radius, 5.1. I took the circumference, I divided by 2 pi. 5.1, you square it, times pi equals, and there's 81.5, and that would be the answer, square units. Now, when we go to this problem, you may recall from last time, we were given a diameter here is the hypotenuse of this inscribed triangle. And whenever you inscribe a triangle where the hypotenuse is the diameter, uh, it is a right triangle. I gave you it was 90 degrees, and I gave you the legs were 8 and 5. And what do we need to apply the area formula? We need the radius. So what do you do? Well, you get the diameter first. You do what you can do. You're given these two sides. Can you get the diameter? And the answer you should recall by now, and you need to review either the last lesson or the lesson on right triangles. If you forgot, you use the Pythagorean theorem. You take 8 one side, you square it, you add it to 5 squared the other side, hit equal, take the square root, and there 9.4 is the diameter. Divide that by 2, and that's the radius 4.7. Square that times pi, and you should get 69.9 or round it off to 70, and that would be the answer. And now we have one last problem, and it's very similar to the last one. In fact, it really is. I'm giving you a circle, and I'm giving you a relationship to a certain triangle. It's a 90-degree triangle, a right triangle. It has a special angle, 30 degrees. The hypotenuse is 25. What do you do? You find the diameter first because you know, because of this type of a triangle, that this side opposite the 30-degree angle is one-half the hypotenuse. So you take 25, and you divide by 2. Now that's the diameter. You need the radius. Divide that by 2. That's the radius. Square it times pi 
and the answer is 122.7 or rounds off to 123 square units for the circle. Now you're going to get a whole bunch of problems like this. Always what you have to do first is figure the radius and once you got the radius you're best home free thanks to the calculator. I might point out to you that years ago before we had calculators we could do the same problems manually but it was a lot of work. First you had to square both sides that wasn't too bad. But it got worse if these numbers were like 12.3 and 4.9. Then after you squared them and you added them then you had to take the square root in order to get the diameter. That was, large, that was a lot of calculation. If you didn't have a calculator, that took a long time. Once you did that, you divide them by 2. Once you did that, then you had to square them. That was work. Multiply by pi, that was work. To do this manual of pencil and paper uh, was quite arduous. Uh, and in fact, if these numbers weren't nice whole numbers, it became even worse. Suppose this was 123. And suppose this number over here was, uh, I'll make up a number here, 37. Now you got to do the diameter, then the radius, and then the area. Now what is that? Well, I'll tell you, manually it's hard to do. You take 123 and you square it, and you get a number there. Uh, you add that to 37 squared, and you get a number, and hit equals. Now you've done two squares and an equal to get to there. Then you take the square root. That was a lot of work in the old days, and it is 128.4. Now you got the diameter. You've done a lot of math by now if you've done it manually. Then you divide by 2, and that gives you the radius. Now you got the radius, you got to square it. Multiply that times pi, and now you got the area, which would be 12,958 approximately. Now, that's a lot of work, 12,958 uh, square units. Uh, if I didn't make a mistake, I'll go back and check it later, and you can too. There's a good chance I made a mistake because Dr. Dell makes lots of mistakes. But here's what you do with a calculator. You check your work. So I'm going to start again. I'm going to take 37 squared, do it a little bit different order, plus... 123 squared equals, take the square root, that gives me the diameter, divide by 2 equals. Now i got to square that, and I'm going to multiply that by pi, and I'm going to get uh, 12,958. Well, I think I did it right because I did the problem twice now, and I got the same answer. And by the way, in practical math, as I've told you many times, you always check your work, especially if it's important. If this is some kind of a problem and you're actually getting ready to build something, you definitely want to be sure that you've got the right answer. So this is Dr. Dell signing off. You've got your problems to do, then you'll have a quiz. Uh, I think you'll find they're very, very uh, fun and easy. And uh, next time we'll talk a little bit more about circles, and I'll show you a few special properties that will come in handy occasionally. And then we get to go to three-dimensional figures. Dr. Dell signing off. Have a good one. Bye-bye.